right? Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you for the introduction, and uh, thank you for uh, thank you for the organizers for having me this seminar. Um, I actually know that Yam uh, uh, Mambrini, uh, he gave a talk a few months ago about uh, some similar topic, and I'm sure there must be some overlap uh, with what he was going, uh, he was talking, but um, he, well, I, I also know that uh, he didn't have much time to get into a uh, very detail about uh, uh, this particular topic. So I hope I might my talk would cover uh, could cover the uh, those uh, details of this topic. Um, all right. So, uh, oh, oh, how can I forward? Uh, yeah. Um, by the way, can you see my uh, pointer on the screen here? Oh, uh, I could not. Uh, oh, okay. Let me see. Um, Do you using the oh now no, 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 you can see all right um yes all right so first I'm going to uh brief, give a brief introduction of, of what I'm going to talk about and then move on to um some sort of basic stuff which is uh, which gives you an idea of standard picture of infraton dynamics and its effect into the standard uh, dark matter production. Um, once you know the standard picture, then uh, we can see what's happening in the non-standard scenario, which I'm going to talk about in, in, in the next, and then I will conclude. Um, uh, by the way, please, uh, if you have any questions, please stop me and uh, ask any time during my presentation. Uh, so uh, just to set a scene, uh, this is what we are in. So we are living in a light side, which is standard model plus. Uh, now we see gravity, have sort of the gravitational waves, and um, but we are almost quite sure that there must be a, a dark sector behind us, where uh, there must be a dark matter, dark energy, and inflation, and so on. And um, uh, any physics we understand model. And in my talk, in particular, I'm going to focus on dark matter physics. Well, dark matter itself has also a uh, you know, huge varieties in models, um, but uh, among them, the most popular scenario is classical WIMP scenario, the weekly, no, WIMP, WIMP scenario, weekly interacting massive particle. Um, I assume all of you know well about this scenario, but uh, uh, this is very uh, interesting because it has a, uh, this, its inter interaction with the standard model is as strong as a, a standard model weak interaction. So it's in principle observable scenario by experiments. Uh, on the other hand, um, there's also a um, interesting scenario, which is called a FIMP, feebly interacting massive particle, uh, which is characterized by a very weak interaction, feeble interaction with the standard model. So the typical example is gravity known. So historically, um, FIMP could be as old as a WIMP. And uh, uh, what I'm saying, what I'm, why I'm saying this is interesting is um, the FIMP it has never been in thermal bus in whole history, and uh, therefore it has sensitivity to the the era of inflation. So uh, it, it it could have some information of inflation. So this is actually, this is actually um, the uh, main take home message of my talk. Um, but uh, let's see, I'm going to talk about this in detail in in the following slides. So first of all, the FIMP is not a kind of special particle, uh, which can appear uh, when the dark sector, uh, including a FIMP, uh, is highly secluded from the standard model. For instance, if we have a dark sector which has uh, only uh, interactions with uh, gravity, then such dark sector should contain a FIMP. 
And also, uh, this is my favorite example, in high-scale supersymmetric scenarios, um, um, Gravitino is also uh, um, Gravitino is one, also uh, one of the good candidates in a film or for FIMP, and whose interaction is suppressed by SUSY scale uh, to the fourth, actually, in this amplitude, in this process. Um, so um, uh, just taking this as an example, um, the typical cross-section of FIMP production looks like this. The S is just energy squared, so uh, basically energy to the sixth over uh, some cut of scale to the eighth. Uh, then uh, um, uh, what people normally do with this cross section is solving a Boltzmann equation, uh, putting this um, cross section into the right hand side, the reaction rate R, which is defined here. So uh, just plug, plug this into uh, 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 this cross section here. Uh, we can just um, easily compute this reaction rate in the FIMP case. Uh, it's basically um, some coefficient times, you know, temperature to the 12th over lambda to the 8th, which we can easily imagine on the dimensional ground. So then um, uh, what to do next is uh, rewrite the Boltzmann equation in this form, just uh, by introducing um, so-called co-moving number density. Uh, here, the number density of X particle divided by the temperature cubed. And then we can rewrite it towards my equation as a differential equation with respect to the temperature. Um, then the rest of the computation is straightforward. We can just perform the integration with respect to temperature uh, from T we heat to, the, to today. And then we get uh, this exp analytic uh, expression. So then immediately we can compute the number density or relic abundance of this thin particle. And this is a typical parameter, parameter choices uh, for the, to, get the, of, to get the right amount of the number density. Uh, the heating temperature is required to be 10 to 12 GeV. The cutoff scale is 10 to 14 GeV and dark matter mass is about uh, a few hundred MeV. Which uh, looks looks reasonable, but then a, a question arises: Is this computation really correct? Well, it looks fine, but it's actually not correct. That's what I'm going to talk about next. Um, together with some standard picture of infraton dynamics. So what was missing in the previous computation is the definition of reheating temperature. So to define the reheating temperature, we have to specify the infraton sector. So for simplicity, we take here the infraton potential to be quadratic, uh, which is actually a good approximation when the infraton field phi uh, is much smaller than the Planck scale. So it's well uh, describing the infraton dynamics during reheating after the end of inflation. Then we can, uh, um, we can derive the uh, equation motion of this infraton field together with decay with gamma phi. And then energy density is defined by, uh, by uh, taking, the, 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 taking the average over one oscillation of infraton. And using two, those two, we get this evolution equation of uh, energy density of, uh, of infraton. Um, then um, then uh, the set of differential equations we have to solve is here. So the, the, uh, the evolution equation of an infraton energy density and uh, radiation energy density rho r together with um, the freedom equation. This actually can be easily solved. Uh, first, we looked at we we, we are going to look at, at this uh, infraton um, differential equations. Um, suppose well, at early times we can safely take um, uh, decay wheels uh, to be much smaller than Hubble scale. 
So we can just neglect the right hand side of this equation, first equation. Then we can immediately derive um, analytic expression. So rho phi is scales as a to the minus three. It scales as a matter. And then using this expression, uh, plug back the, into uh, this second equation, rho phi here. Um, then um, we can also get the analytic expression for rho r as a function of scale factor a. Uh, it looks a, a bit messy, but uh, it, it turns out uh, this is an um, interesting feature. Uh, but for now, um, by using this expression, let's define a T reheating. Actually, there are some different ways to define a T reheating, but let me take one um, uh, seemingly uh, reasonable uh, definition, which is here. So by taking those two energy densities come to equal at A reheat. And then um, uh, from this condition, we can solve for uh, A reheating, uh, which is given here, and then plug this back into the, this expression. Uh, by the way, uh, we can, at, at, at later times, we can get this second term because it, it, it drops faster than the first term. So we can just keep the first term for now and then plug this back into this first term and then we obtain a raw, raw radiation at A reheating. And then using this row R uh, with the definition of radiation energy density, we immediately get the T reheating. So which looks like a very visible, it typically tend to 10 GeV for a decay width of order 100 GeV, right? But this is not the end of the story. The T reheating is not the highest temperature in the universe. Again, if we look at looked at this uh, analytic expression, when A is equal to A end, obviously rho R vanishes. But once A becomes a little bit bigger than A end, it's, it, it, it takes some non-zero value. But at later time. It, 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 it get decreased um, scales there to minus three half. So there must be some peak in between, uh, which can be computed easily, which we define, uh, which we call A max. So the radiation energy density at A max uh, can be expressed in, in this way. So from this expression, we can define the maximum temperature during reheating. Uh, obviously, well, for the reasonable uh, parameter choices, um, T max is bigger than T reheating. So which we haven't taken into account in previous um, computation dark matter production. So that's why I am saying it was not correct. So we have to correctly take, take Take, in, take this into account. So uh, just to get an idea of T reheating and T max, uh, let's consider a more specific example of uh, inflation. So let's consider a Stavinsky-like uh, inflaton model. So here, the capital phi uh, is an inflaton. And let's parameterize the you know, gamma phi by uh, by this couple, effective coupling y and inflaton mass. And then just uh, using this, we get uh, T reheating is just proportional to this coupling y. Um, by the way, the inflaton mass is typically third, three times 10 to 13 GeV. So uh, T reheating is roughly speaking 10 to 14 GeV times some um, uh, decay coupling. On the other hand, T max uh, just substitute this gamma phi into this expression, uh, we get this formula. Uh, it, it also depends on the uh, energy density of infraton at the end of inflation. But, uh, in, but in the Stravinsky model, it, it typically it is this scale. So uh, T max uh, is something like about 10 to 15 GV times square root of Y. So it, it, it 
it has some uh, different power in, in Y. So uh, I, I'm going to come back to this point later. But then, um, then uh, by taking into account the effect of T marks, we, um, um, we, we are about evaluating the dark matter production. Particularly uh, important uh, point is that uh, what we have computed previously is the dark matter production after T reheating. So, uh, but turns out the, the important uh, production happens between T marks and T reheating before T reheating. So uh, let's look at the uh, Boltzmann equation during this epoch. Um, now, uh, the um, common ring number density uh, looks peculiar in, car, in, in, in X times temperature to minus A, but it's actually equivalent to uh, NX times A to the cube because A uh, scale, the temperature uh, scales, uh, it, it doesn't scale to A inverse anymore. Uh, it scales that, like uh, temperature to the minus. A scales as temperature minus A over, th over three. So then, and this is indeed a common moving number density. And then what's my question is now uh, becoming in this form, but essentially the same as uh, what we saw in the previous slides. And then uh, what we do, oh, there's missing uh, the cube here. Uh, so, um, we can compute nx over t heating cubed um, by just uh, perform, performing the integration with respect to temperature from t marks to, to reheat. Then we get uh, something in this complicated uh, um, expression. But uh, uh, the point is that uh, if we compare uh, this number density, which we, I did not y non instantaneous with the y instantaneous, which we obtained. Oh, uh, just uh, please ignore this beta t, but uh, essentially, uh, this part uh, is what we have obtained in the previous computation. So um, um, the difference is uh, some log factor by comparing the non-instantaneous case and instantaneous case. So which can be about 10 or 100, which is not small. So we have to take this into account in the, final, in the computation of the final relic abundance. Uh, simply, uh, fortunately, we can uh, uh, maintain this effect by multiplying this so-called booth factor uh, by this uh, uh, um, the number density uh, expression, then which comes to uh, in it comes to the, the the place together with dark matter mass. So which means that uh, the prediction for the dark matter mass can be ten or hundred different from what we have obtained in a, in a naive computation done in previous slides. Then uh, seems same, same it is uh, now we 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 have done correctly, but uh, the answer is actually not no. But um, let's consider uh, what what would happen if we consider a uh, some specific model. Uh, so uh, this is just an example. Uh, which we call uh, energy momentum portal model. Excuse um, me, can I yes. ask a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in the, the equation of, I mean, the evolution equation, I mean, the Boltzmann equation for during reheating, there are three, mm -hmm. three of them for mm -hmm. inflaton, energy density, mm -hmm. and radiation, mm -hmm. energy density. So, mm -hmm. as, as I remember, the before one slide before, mm -hmm. uh, there was an equation motion for phi, uh, mm -hmm. which does not depend on the any assumption on the equation of state for the platon. 
during reheating as well. I remember. Uh, mm -hmm. But the here the uh, what about the when when you take the mm -hmm. equation motion for the energy density in the third last line. Uh, you do you did, did you make any assumption on the equation of state? Oh or, yeah, here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for asking. This is actually the uh, very important point in the second half of my talk. But uh, 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 at this point, uh, what I assumed is the infraton potential. Mm -hmm. so, uh, now I am I'm, I'm assuming the infraton potential is quadratic in phi. Um, um, the, um, so using the um, this relation, which I'm not see well by color. Yeah, here. So uh, turns out this coefficient. So this is responsible for the power of phi. So this is relevant for uh, um, having the uh, uh, this coefficient three. Um, well, roughly speaking, because of this. Uh, quadratic potential, the pressure, uh, if we compute the pressure, which is uh, just uh, changing the sign here, minus, see? So the, uh, if you take the uh, average on phi dot square, which is two times V, so um, then you get uh, in the pressure, V minus V becomes zero. So it's the equation state is just zero, which means it's matter like yeah. evolution. So then you get three here. Yeah. So yes, um, yeah, this is really important point, and I'm going to get to that in, in the in the second half of my talk. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I see. So it depends on the shape of potential, and mm -hmm. the, if uh, shape is like, um, it's like uh, this is the. Uh, what is this? Liouville, Liouville, Liouville theorem for the periodic mm -hmm. motion. It depends mm -hmm. on, is that the quadratic? Let's say if you have an inverse potential, I don't know if it is possible to oh, have I, inverse potential yeah. uh, during I the have inverse, but, <laughs> but yeah. you have a negative <laughs> yeah. sign. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. In that case, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you take into, into account also a general form of the uh, Imperative potential. Yeah, what we have done is mm -hmm. taking the just as a power law mm -hmm. with a positive exponent. For the positive but, exponent. Uh, yes, only for positive. I have, right. Yeah, we haven't considered negative <laughs> negative power. Uh, that's a, yeah, that's sort of interesting. Yes, clearly, if you have a plus in front, <laughs> then uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, still repulsive. Uh, it's a repulsive. So you you need to have a minus sign in front <laughs> if you want to have mm -hmm. a negative exponent it's, it must be a, attractive mm -hmm. i don't know if you have a like a this kind of potential to be more yeah i don't know mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Is, is positive sign potential for um, stability oh i'm sorry uh, i I think you say the you think the power law power law potential, but all coefficients are positive. You mm -hmm. see for stability. Oh yeah, yeah. Implicitly, uh, yeah. The some the implicit assumption is the infrared must be oscillating, right? Uh, so also the. Uh, for inflation to oscillate, we have the potential should be bounded from below. So um, we didn't consider any uh, like a runaway potential or non oscillatory potential inflation model. So oh, uh, that's something beyond or outside our scope. Yeah, it's, uh, even though you don't know about the full shape of the inflation potential, this quadratic mm -hmm. form is uh, kind of general. Uh, in for small field uh, oscillation, if you have a stable uh, minimum, mm. uh, yeah, end, well, uh, reheat mm -hmm. and, uh, that's actually not completely general, but uh, uh, at least we can say it is the simplest possibility. Mm. But 
it can be any power in principle. So yeah, so if uh, there's some unharmonic term beyond right. the quadratic exactly. terms. Yeah, yeah. I'll be getting into that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Please be I just paid. <laughs> can I can oh, I sure. uh, it, it's not a question, but uh, it's related to the professor's question, but uh, uh, I don't know if it's a general or not, but uh, you, you may have uh, a symmetric potential, right? Then, uh, uh, well, I don't know, but uh, I, I'm a bit interested in such cases because, for example, if uh, by, uh, if, if the potential takes uh, quadratic uh, at the positive, positive pi, but uh, uh, it may have a different power for the negative pi. Uh, it's a complicated uh, situation, but uh, in, in that case, uh, the situation will be changed, right? Um, it depends on how, uh, how much it, it, it is asymmetric. For mm -hmm. instance, uh, Stavinsky potential is also asymmetric, actually. Oh, yeah. It's not a complete quadratic. It's a small uh, deviation mm -hmm. from the quadratic during uh, about this minimum. But uh, in, in this case, uh, it doesn't affect that much, or we can just, it's a sort of negligible um, contribution. We can use uh, quadratic as a well approximated potential mm -hmm. uh, during this oscillation error. But, Asymmetry is really, um, um, you know, extreme. Like uh, uh, there's no wall here, and instead it's a very shallow potential. For instance, mm -hmm. it could be quite different. Okay, we haven't considered that uh, in such cases. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, then uh, let's come back to the, the specific example. So. Um, uh, the uh, the basic idea is a portal um, interaction between the standard modern energy moment and tensor and dark sector energy moment and tensor. And this is not completely peculiar because we see uh, such example in many places. Um, well, one motivation to consider such portal is um, uh, called emergent gravity scenarios um, where the uh, um, in, in such scenario the graviton field uh, is regarded as a, some emergent type of field arising from the uh, hidden sector energy moment tensor. Uh, we don't use this explicit model but uh, motivated by scenario um, uh, we we take uh, the uh, well, in this case, the hidden sector energy momentum tensor couples to the standard model energy momentum tensor. So we, we take this uh, idea to uh, replace the energy momentum tensor of gravity sector with the uh, dark matter, which gives you uh, uh, this type of uh, portal coupling. And more well-known example is gravity node. So in, in particular, in high scale uh, SUSY model. So if the SUSY spectrum except gravity, you know, are high above the inflation scale, we can just integrate them out and the effective theory is standard model plus gravity, you know. And in this case, the theory may be uh, constructed by uh, taking the variation in Fairbairn with um, uh, Goldstein of field. And then uh, you see the um, effective theory is uh, the coupling between energy momentum center of standard model times energy momentum tensor of uh, Goldstein. So it's exactly the, a, one of the example of uh, this energy momentum portal. We can just generalize uh, this type of coupling to um, uh, some uh, effective, uh, effective coupling. So the, uh, actually uh, this type of uh, model uh, in this type of model, the reaction rate of dark matter is proportional to amplitude is proportional to one to one, one over some cutoff scale to the fourth. So the reaction rate, the power in the reaction rate, the power of temperature is the same as the, the previous example, the T to the F12. And uh, just the difference is the, the coefficient, which depends on the spin of the dark matter and um, the, the computation goes parallel 
to, to get uh, this final uh, result of dark matter abundance with a boost factor. So the, the typical parameter space for this dark matter scenario uh, the, is mass is a uh, mass about uh, one GV or something or a bit, or uh, uh, ten GV or one GV scale with this typical um, TV heating and a cutoff scale lambda. So, um, but then um, I I briefly mentioned and this is not actually completely correct because there is some missing channel to produce such dark matter, which is coming from the infraton decay. Um, so far, we haven't specified the uh, infraton coupling to a dark matter, but even, even though uh, the such direct coupling is absent, uh, infraton can still decay into a dark matter uh, because of the following reason. So the infraton is required to couple to the standard model to reheat the universe. For instance, infraton phi couples to the Higgs field. At the same time, once we have a portal coupling, which uh, brings us the coupling between dark matter and the standard model. So once we have this coupling, we can draw a loop diagram here in this example, the Higgs loop. Uh, to induce the coupling between infraton and, and, and dark matter. So uh, this loop induced decay channel is non negligible. Um, and uh, um, well, and the interestingly, um, uh, basically, uh, this coupling uh, is relevant for. Uh, thermal production, uh, I mean, production from thermal scattering uh, to the dark matter. And the other coupling is relevant for reheating. So it's a sort of model less dependent coupling. If we have an ordinary film scenario, we have always uh, this channel from infraton decay. And then um, the computation is also as straightforward. We can put the reaction rate which is given by uh, this partial decay with times number density of infraton, and just plug this into this R, then take the integration between T max and T reheat, we get um, this result. Um, the, then uh, here's a final plot of this uh, specific example. Now the y-axis is a, a coupling, effective coupling of infraton decay into the standard model. And y-axis is the dark matter mass. And important point is that uh, uh, um, the, for higher reheating temperatures, the scattering contribution is dominant. On the other hand, the scattering contribution um, goes like a temperature to seven, so for lower the heating temperature, the scattering contribution quickly drops, but instead the decay contribution uh, becomes dominant. So uh, the, this change can be seen in this bend, bend uh, line. So the, this uh, change appears around, uh, the, uh, around uh, uh, 10 to 12 GV or something. Here, uh, y is 10 to 13, and uh, it's typically 10, 6 times 10 to uh, 11 GB. So the, uh, the important lesson we can learn from this example is, um, as I have uh, mentioned, the high, for a higher reheating temperature, uh, we can just care the scattering contribution. But once we consider lower, relatively lower reheating temperature, the dark uh, the decay contribution uh, we have uh, we can cannot be neglected. And such contribution can be always there in, 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 in the typical FIMP scenarios. Well, so what is the value of mu phi, the infraton coupling to Higgs? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I have parameterized the decay with by using y. So y is um, uh, mu phi over m phi. So if y is about 10 to minus 3, then uh, mu phi is about 10 to 12 GV. 
Uh, no, 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 oh. no, no, 10 to 10 GB. So then, then uh, is there any loop correction to the implantum potential? I mean, is there any size of contribution, although it is a model dependent on the shape of the potential? Yeah, well, um, well, you, you can consider it's naively very small because, uh, mm -hmm. for instance, um, just uh, considering the, uh, uh, the infraton safe energy diagram, through a Higgs loop, and there's a two mu phi's, and uh, typical coupling is mu phi or y in flaton. So each are suppressed by ten to minus three. So in total, ten to minus six um, times the factor ten to minus five, five smaller than a tree level. So it's uh, it's hard to um, uh, mm. affect, mm. So, uh, but of course. If you consider larger value, there, there, there could be some worries. So maybe we have to be careful about those subdivision. All right. So okay. uh, then, also, also, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, no you, you, you compare between the radiative decay contribution and the scattering mm -hmm. uh, from the summer, I mean, summer scattering of the standard the particles, mm -hmm. then also. The inflaton also scattered into dark matter directly. Or here um, you are not making assumption. You assume that there is no direct coupling between inflaton and dark matter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. Um, yeah. Implicitly, I have assumed that there is no direct coupling at tree mm. level, mm. and so the. Um, uh, yeah, what I'm what I'm trying to say is, even though there's no direct coupling, mm. um, uh, there's a loop induced coupling mm. because the symmetry doesn't forbid this coupling, and naturally, uh, we can easily come up with this standard model loop to induce um, uh, this uh, decay channel. Okay. All right. May I ask? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how was the coupling between the phi squared and the h squared? The phi squared, h squared, and the one of the phi is just a web and the oscillating. Um, yeah, um, that's a uh, there's a subtlety. Uh, that's a completely di different scenario, actually. Um, well. Uh, yes, uh, my answer is yes, that also contribute. Um, so like, uh, um, it's not kind of uh, uh, one of the two infraton getting web, but instead it's a sort of oscillating contribution. So the uh, two infraton couples to two dark matter and two infraton, uh, um, it's sort of annihilation of inflaton into a dark, a dark matter. Um, well, you might wonder that uh, during this epoch, the heating epoch, the inflaton is just oscillating coherent field. So uh, we cannot see such a particle picture of annihilation to a dark matter, but indeed it happens, this oscillating field um, get together and annihilate into a dark matter. So the, uh, this production channel is still possible um, if you have a phi square, h square coupling at tree level. Yes, that, that's indeed uh, true. So in that sense, this is uh, one of the such examples, the loop-induced infraton dark matter coupling. So this is a simple decay picture, but instead if phi is squared, instead of this term, then uh, the, de and the, the annihilation takes place instead of the de decay. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, so then uh, let's move on to the, uh, the non-standard scenarios. That's, um, so far, uh, 
so we, so far we have considered the the impact on potential as a quadratic one. Uh, so the, for instance, the um, the Sabin ski like potential can also be well approximated by a quadratic potential during the oscillation error, but it's not necessary to be the case. So the infrared oscillation can take take place uh, with non-quadratic potential, like just power low potential. So like uh, a case just power. So, so far we have considered K equals two, but can be three or four or higher powers. So uh, uh, the, uh, by this I call, uh, this is a non-standard scenario. And uh, the standard scenario I, I, is uh, just I refer to the K equals two case. So then uh, let's, Let's let's see uh, what's the difference uh, by comparing the standard case. In the standard case, quadratic potential um, uh, through the Ryubi theorem, the, we can say that um, the pressure is zero, so the the equation of state parameter is zero. But on the other hand, if the potential has some uh, non-quadratic form, uh, then uh, uh, the oscillation average for phi dot square is k times potential. And that immediately gives you an idea the non-zero pressure during this oscillation error. So the W, the equation state parameter, is, is not zero anymore. Instead, it, it depends on the power k. So k minus two over k plus two. So then the evolution equation rho phi is, is, is affected by this non zero W. Um, so, uh, so it behaves um, that the W is corresponding to uh, non zero. So, if K is three, then uh, W is one fifth. If K is four, it's like radiation. But in any case, uh, we can. We can do the same computation to in solving this differential equation. First, we neglect, neglect the uh, decay width, and then get the analytic expression for rho phi of a, which is uh, scales as a to the minus three times one plus w. So indeed, uh, if k equals four, the equation state parameter w is one third. So rho phi scales as a to minus four, which looks like radiation, for instance. So let's consider this effect. Okay. So then, um, so first, um, uh, to 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 be more specific, let's consider uh, a concrete model of infrared potential. For instance, such a power law potential during reheating, during oscillation, can be induced by this type of um, uh, potential, which is called T model, uh, 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 described by a hyperbolic tangent. And indeed, if phi is much smaller than Planck scale, uh, it reproduces this power law potential. And if phi is bigger than Planck scale, it goes like lambda to the n Planck to the fourth with some coefficient. And with this potential, as an example, we should compute when the inflation ends, um, which may be defined by the end of the accelerated expansion, uh, which is equal to the, the slow roll parameter becomes one. And immediately, um, from this expression, um, we can immediately uh, see that the, at the end of the accelerated expansion, ex the equation of state parameter becomes minus one third. And then by using this, we can say that um, the oscillation average of phi dot square equals to the potential. Right then, uh, um, well, then uh, uh, by using this, we can estimate the the energy density at the at this point at the end of the inflation, um, which is um, a three half times potential. And also, uh, we need to know what the field value at this point at this time. 
which can be computed by um, using this epsilon parameter, the slower parameter. Um, uh, epsilon h it can be written in terms of in terms of this field value. So we can solve this equation for uh, phi and then get this simple expression, which is depending on the power of the potential k. Okay. So from the numerical computation, we can get some idea on those quantities depending on k. So the phi n in terms uh, in, in the Planck units is about one. And also the rho n energy density is about this scale, lambda times n Planck to the fourth. Um, well, typically lambda uh, is about 10 to the minus 11 or 12, which I'm, I, I, I've get that uh, shortly. Then um, uh, next we uh, what to do is to, to consider the input from the CMB. Uh, basically, it's uh, about uh, effort, number of efforts. Um, well, it's a sort of standard computation from efforts, number of efforts, uh, and to 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 match the uh, uh, the part of it, power spectrum. We we can know the 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 uh, the, the coupling of inflaton potential. So the lambda. Uh, to be uh, should be chosen so that uh, 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 this relation can be maintained. So as you can see, um, the the power spectrum is about ten to minus ten. So and for uh, fifty or sixty force a lambda to be about ten to minus twelve or something uh, and so on. But at the same time, uh, at this point we don't know the n star, the number of efforts. So which can be estimated uh, by using this straightforward computation. So it actually uh, N star uh, depends on uh, reheating uh, the energy density at re reheating. So um, to determine this inflaton coupling lambda, we need to know the reheating temperature. But to find the reheating temperature, we need to know how inflaton decays. So let's consider how inflaton can decay in these non-standard scenarios. It is not actually simple because uh, now uh, inflaton mass itself is time dependent. It's, uh, it's a most different part compared to the quadratic potential case. Uh, uh, well, obviously, in a quadratic potential, inflaton mass is constant, but um, uh, suppose inflaton potential is quadratic, the inflaton mass is obviously time dependent. It, it's given by inflaton field value itself. So uh, we have to take into account this time dependence in the inflaton mass. So to do so, uh, we take uh, some approximation. Uh, which we call envelope approximation. So inflaton is um, fast oscillating like this, but at the same time, uh, the, uh, by taking the by taking the um, oscillation average, uh, um, we can find some envelope of this oscillation. So we can just decompose those two components: the slowly changing uh, component and the fast oscillating component and just average out the uh, fast, com fast oscillating component uh, so that we can define phi zero uh, to be um, uh, satisfying this uh, condition, the rho energy density of rho phi, uh, energy density of inflaton can be expressed by only uh, inflaton potential. So then uh, once we get um, this relation, uh, we can parameterize the inflaton field value, which is slowly changing along this orange line uh, as a function of rho phi, uh, total energy density of an uh, inflaton sector. Uh, accordingly, the inflaton mass can be written as a function of rho phi. Uh, using this, for instance, inflaton, if inflaton has a coupling to uh, fermions, with coupling of constant y, 
the, the decay width is proportional to m phi, and m phi is given like given by this, which is a function rho phi. So um, then we now know the decay width as a function of time or rho phi. So um, then, uh, well, interestingly, even though gamma phi is time dependent, this equation can be solved analytically like this, uh, uh, which depend, depend, depending on the, the power k. Um, so I, I am not uh, explaining detail about this expression, but uh, what we have to know from this is that uh, uh, from this, we know the how uh, temperature scales in terms of the scale factor A. So the, uh, for the standard case, T scales as A to minus three over eight, but for larger K, T uh, drops faster than standard case. And uh, uh, that is because the rho phi, the infrared energy density scales, well, drops faster for uh, a larger k. So, um, so, so during the reheating uh, for a higher value of k, the infrared energy density uh, doesn't have enough power to reheat in a, to reheat the universe. So the universe for uh, universe is less reheated when k is bigger. So that is a point, uh, what I'm uh, trying to emphasize here. Then, um, oh, I can see that. Um, okay, so then um, now we can define the reheating temperature by imposing this relation. Now we know the rho phi and we know the rho r. And from this we can uh, define the T reheating. And then um, we, we, we now have uh, all information to determine all of the parameters, T reheating, lambda, and number of evils. So by the computation, of the iterational computation, we find uh, the, we can fix those parameters numerically. So for instance, if the Yuka coupling Y is 10 to minus five, uh, depending on K, the lambda to be fixed by uh, like this, it's about 10 to minus 11 or 12. And T reheat is indeed decreasing uh, for larger K uh, because the universe is less reheated for a uh, bigger K. So indeed, that is, a tr that is true. Then um, also we can, uh, in the same way, we can find the uh, maximal temperature. Interestingly, maximal temperature doesn't depend that much on uh, the power of K here. And this is a, a plot for temperature as a function of scale factor. Um, the T max uh, is almost independent from, uh, the, uh, the, from K. But T reheat uh, strongly depends on K. So indeed, the standard case is here, the T reheating. But uh, for if K is four, the quartic case, the T reheating is much smaller than the standard case. And accordingly, the splitting between T max and T reheat can be bigger for bigger K. Like uh, uh, it can be the, it can be ten to thirteen, uh, in this ratio for uh, quartic case. You can easily imagine that this has a huge impact on the dark matter production, and we uh, repeat the same computation on the uh, dark matter production by using a Boltzmann equation. Um, the in the same way by defining the co-moving number density. Now the temperature dependence in A has some uh, peculiar uh, form, but essentially the, the, the computation is uh, the same. So uh, by defining the, uh, 
So the generic reaction rate with the power of n, the temperature dependence, um, we can we find uh, those cases. So uh, actually, um, um, uh, the the example we have seen in, in the uh, first half of my talk is uh, this case. Uh, the, there's a log dependence in uh, for a row, uh, T max and T reheating, but there are some other uh, uh, cases as well. And at the same time, uh, in the non-standard case, well, um, we can also consider the, the case where the, um, the, the dark matter heavier than T reheating. Well, in, in that case, we can compute the same way that the dark matter production or, or, uh, can be done by the temperature uh, becoming the infraton, uh, well, the dark matter mass, and then afterwards, dark matter number density get diluted. Uh, so uh, that's essentially the way we can com we compute this number density. And at the same time, um, uh, we can also consider the dark matter production from infraton decay. Here, uh, I'm not talking about the loop-induced one, but more generic one. If we have a generic coupling of infraton to the dark matter with a branching ratio uh, prominent by, by just BR here, um, then we can also compute the decay contribution in the final dark matter abundance. Uh, the implicit assumption here is this branching fraction is just constant uh, in, in time. Uh, although it is not a generic, well, branching ratio can also be uh, depending on time, but for simplicity, we can just take the branching ratio as a, uh, as a constant independent on K. And then, um, then immediately we can find uh, this formula for dark matter, product, dark matter number density from, from the infraton decay. And also, uh, if K is bigger than two, there's a, an interesting uh, possibility. So in, in such a cases, the dark infraton mass is also decreasing with time. So if dark matter mass is relatively heavy, at some point, infraton mass becomes smaller than dark matter mass, which, is, which doesn't happen in a quadratic case, but it could happen in a, a, a non-quadratic non cases. So in that case, um, in that case, uh, dark matter production doesn't happen afterwards. So we can take, take this effect into account here. So uh, this is just, uh, I want to show the, the whole list of the, those uh, different possibilities. And uh, you don't need to care about the detail, but uh, uh, at least uh, we, well, I want to say that uh, um, uh, such a non-standard dynamics of infraton oscillation gives a, uh, uh, gives a lot of possibilities to change in the final abundance of dark matter. Um, here's uh, some of the examples. Um, here uh, we take N to be six, so which is the uh, our reaction rate proportional to the temperature to the 12th and the infraton decay coupling is 10 to minus pi. So in this case, um, the final abundance is proportional to this factor. Um, this is coming from the uh, just the reaction rate. And this is the enhancement from the, uh, the T max, uh, between the T max and T reheating. So if K is two, uh, there's no such enhancement here, or, or uh, there, there's indeed log enhancement, but uh, not, not the power law enhancement. But for larger K, uh, there's a power law enhancement. And accordingly, we, the, the, the suppression factor lambda to require it to be uh, bigger. And for the decay, it is also interesting. Um, so generically, the dark matter abundance is proportional to branching fraction times dark matter mass, so it, which is the case for K equals two. 
So uh, for larger dark matter mass, the branching ratio is required to be small. But um, if k is bigger than two, uh, the situation is a bit different. So the mass dependence has uh, some power uh, depending on k. And at some point, for instance, if k is three, at some point, um, the dark matter mass becomes bigger than infrared mass and then requires a bigger branching ratio. But for k equals four, uh, interestingly, the mass dependence just canceled at some point. So you, you get this flat shape of, in, in, of line. All right, uh, then uh, I, I'm coming to the conclusion. So what we have discussed in uh, this talk is um, the FIMP production um, can be affected by the infraton dynamics and particularly the um, the re key reheating and T max are the important two of the important quantities in computing the uh, accurate FIMP abundance. And also, uh, not only the scattering, we have to consider um, a decay contribution from infraton, which is not a special a model dependent contribution, but rather more generic once we have a reheating and thermal production of, of FIMP. Then putting those two together, we get uh, inevitably we get the decay channel with infraton. And also uh, in the second whole half of my talk, I have uh, discussed the, um, the effect of the non-standard infraton oscillation in the dark matter production. And um, depending on the uh, infra shape of the infraton potential and also production rate of infraton, uh, infra uh, production rate of dark matter. Uh, this effect is actually um, really huge, and uh, it, 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 we should be a bit careful because about uh, this uh, infraton dynamics in such a non-standard case. All right, that's it. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for a nice talk. So now it's time for a question. Uh, if you have uh, any question or comment, please. Uh, uh, Sorry. Oh, okay. You can go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, Kunio. Uh, That's a ni nice talk. Thank you. Uh, so I have a. I want to know that the uh, dark matter uh, production that you are uh, uh, considering. I mean, this uh, is there any direct detection probability of, of of this cross sections in the in this dark matter searches? Can you comment on something on that? Yeah. Um... Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Um, uh, so far, um, I haven't discussed the models uh, that much. Uh, the only the energy, momentum ten, uh, energy momentum portal is the, uh, one example, but uh, um, um, well, in this particular scenario, um, I. I don't see uh, a possibility to observe this dark matter itself, but uh, depending on the scenarios, for instance, if we have um, um, some mediator sector, um, and and uh, well, this is sort of generic FIMP scenario, but uh, if we have a light mediator mediating between dark, uh, FIMP dark matter and the standard model, then um, it's known that there's a possibility to detect such a dark matter through um, a dark matter direct detection. Because of the light mediator, there's an enhancement in the recovery energy of dark matter, even though it is feebly interacting, uh, such enhancement from the light mediator uh, can uh, give you an observable level of signals. So, um, you can connect such scenario with uh, reheating. Of course, FIMP, FIMP dark matter has a sens always sensitivity to uh, information sector. So we can get some information uh, in that sense from direct detection in such scenarios. And indeed, um, I wrote a paper on such scenario with Pyong Wong Ko in, in Kias and uh, Wan Park in uh, Jumbo University. 
And if you are interested in, uh, maybe you can find uh, our paper. Okay, yeah, thanks. I will see your paper and if I need uh, some information, I will write to you. Thank you, thank you. For yeah. So I have a, some conceptual question on uh, the case with the K equal to four. For K mm -hmm. equal to four, you still have non-trivial uh, dependence of temperature on the scale factor. Can you mm -hmm. show so that uh, the, the temperature drops faster uh, mm -hmm. than the case with K equal to two, so mm -hmm. that uh, the reading temperature mm -hmm. gets smaller than the, the case with K equal to two. Mm -hmm. So my question is, the in the case of K equal to four, the inflaton mm -hmm. uh, potential is radiation-like, and mm -hmm. you are generally kind of converting from one radiation to another. I mean, the radiation yeah. Uh, inflaton energy density to radiation standard model energy density. So mm -hmm. then you are kind of converting energy mm -hmm. between the same equation of states. So I wonder, mm -hmm. I'm wondering, of, maybe you have uh, some decay term in the Boltzmann mm -hmm. equation. So I, I'm wondering how does the temperature scales uh, is non-trivially uh, as a function of the scale factor. It's, it's not like uh, temperature proportional to the inverse scale factor for radiation. Suppose mm -hmm. there is no interaction between the inflaton and the radiation, just the inflaton with scales. That, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if you can define the temperature for the inflaton, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, um, I think you in your question, there are multiple... Um, questions. Um, the one is that uh, this is, well, this scaling mm. is the scaling uh, during which the inflaton energy density is dominant in total energy density. Mm. So uh -huh. it's not a radi radiation domination error. So uh -huh. when it's in K equals two, then um, T is not uh, scaling as H minus one, but mm. instead uh, H minus three over eight. Uh, um, this is standard one, but at the same time, um, the well, in some sense, yes, in, in some sense, this is the um, well, uh, I have something in some sense. Well, during such epoch, we can define the temperature, even though infraton itself has doesn't have a temperature. Um, where was that? Uh, uh, yes, um, you can see here, uh, this is the Hubble during reheating. So still inflaton energy density is a dominant component. But uh, in, in, during this epoch, Hubble can still be uh, parameterized by temperature. So the, this temperature is a temperature of radiation, not a temperature of inflaton. Of course, we cannot define mm. the temperature, mm. right? In but in, in that sense, we can always define the temperature uh, during this epoch because there's a radiation. If the radiation is absent, we cannot do this. Mm. So this is one thing. And uh, um, the other thing is that uh, you, are, you are wondering uh, about K equals four case. Yeah, if K equals four, the infraton energy density scales as radiation, so we cannot distinguish one from the other. Mm. So uh, you, you you may wonder how we can define the um, um, uh, uh, reheating. I mean, the, so, also the scaling. I don't. I think that this is from the equation. I know, uh, but the. Uh, the non-trivial dependence on the scale factor. Oh yes, temperature. about the temperature. Yes, about the temperature. Um, this is this is the reason. Uh, the temperature is defined by using the radiation component produced by infraton decay. So uh, this is uh, different from the K equals two. Um, even though infraton scales as as if it is radiation itself, uh, infraton doesn't have a temperature. Mm. So uh, those two cannot be the same. 
So this is a temperature of a decay products of the inflaton. Mm. So when you compute the radiation energy density from the inflaton mm -hmm. decay, you uh, mm -hmm. plug the energy density for the inflaton during reheating, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it depends on the vacation of state mm -hmm. for the inflaton. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, is that because of that? They, I mean, this uh, for equation of state, if if, if a k equal for k equal to four, the mm -hmm. proton and its density scale by the eight one over eight to the fourth, like a radiation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you if you put it back to the equation, Boltzmann mm -hmm. equation for the radiation and the energy density, uh, then you are also determining the radiation and density as a function mm -hmm. of the scale factor, right? Exactly, yes. That, exactly. That's what you got. So I mean, I'm a bit puzzled, but uh, I think that you are result correct, but it's just I wanted to understand what's going on. <laughs> so I'm- Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, related to that, I have a, a comment. Um, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, mm. there are some different ways to define mm. the reheating temperature. Mm. Uh, so uh, one way is is using the, the, the equation of state parameter to define reheating. Once W becomes one third, then we can say it is reheating. Mm. The, uh, regardless what is a component in the energy density, once we get the radiation like energy de uh, equation state parameter, then um, we can say it is also already reheated because radiation dominates in the energy density. Um, uh, but, uh, um, well, it, it's a matter of taste, I think, but uh, uh, the actual radiation component should be composed of in, in standard model particles, which should be produced from infraton decay. It's not infraton itself. So uh, um, uh, in that sense, in that sense, the, the, uh, the definition, uh, which I was talking in this talk, uh, makes sense for a particle physicist because in principle, we can distinguish one from the other, uh, right? Because uh, infraton and standard particles are a completely different thing. So uh, in other words, we can distinguish the radiation component of standard model particles from the uh, radiation of infraton um, oscillation. So that 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 that's uh, one, that that that's a comment I want uh, uh, I want to add. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know it's a bit confusing, particularly in this case. In this case, k equals four. Because uh, just from the equation, if you take the t to the fourth, then mm -hmm. this case by eight to the minus three. So it's like maybe uh, you are you are considering radiation. But the mm -hmm. behavior is, behaves like a meta <laughs> during, during the heating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was very looks yeah. counterintuitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are there any questions also? And actually, I have another question about uh, the radiative decay. So, mm -hmm. so that. Uh, so it depends on this uh, renormalizable coupling. So if you have a non-renormalizable coupling, mm -hmm. like uh, action, inflation, you may mm -hmm. have uh, action coupled to field strength tensors, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, for, for reheating. So that, you, this coupling between inflaton and the Higgs is for reheating. So suppose mm -hmm. you have a different coupling for reheating, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, a normalizer operator. So then the mm -hmm. this radiative decay is not mm -hmm. is not relevant for the dark matter production. Or... Yeah, it, it, it's still relevant because mm -hmm. uh, in that case, this coupling is uh, like uh, a over f a times f mu nu f mu nu, and at the same time, in the at, at standard model energy momentum tensor includes f mu nu f mu nu, so you just draw a photon loop or a gluon loop, gauge boson loop in, 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 in it. Mm. And 
um, the same diagram comes comes out. Mm. Although, uh, well, the coupling is uh, suppressed by you know FA. Mm. Uh, still, uh, nevertheless, mm. the, the loop induced decay is always there in, in, in such cases. Mm. Have you considered that possibility? Uh, no. <laughs> well, yeah. In some sense, there are two model dependence here and there. So here's a dark matter model, and here's a reheating model. So, uh, um, what, uh, but once we have both models, uh, we can always compute uh, this diagram. So, but uh, well, I, I haven't considered many other possibilities yet. So, so another thing is about this. Uh, uh, in order for the scattering process, I mean, this the maximum reheating temperature to be relevant, you need the uh, highly temperature dependent uh, scattering cross section. Mm -hmm. So that's why you are considering this uh, particular uh, form of the uh, mediator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, but the the now you said that also this makes the dependence on the maximum temperature mm -hmm. also depend on the equation of state during reheating. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, but still, this uh, the dependence on the maximum reheating temperature requires uh, similar. Uh, uh, scattering cross section. I mean, even for general uh, equation of state during reheating, you may have large uh, mm -hmm. uh, difference between the maximum reheating temperature, maximum temperature, and reheating temperature. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you make uh, the scattering cross section less sensitive to the temperature? Um, I mean, well, yeah, that... I don't know if you because you have a kind of yeah two things together, <clears throat> but, but you always need uh, this temperature dependence, like, uh, I don't know, I forgot the what is the T to the six. The cross section is about, is proportional to the temperature to the A's, right? Um, well, in, in terms of cross section, it's- uh, Six, sorry. Uh, six. <laughs> temperature to the six. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, uh, uh, first of all, yeah, I, I haven't mentioned uh, explicitly, but uh, the, the power in R, the reaction rate, if the power of R is bigger than the power in a denominator, which is uh, there's a te temperature to ninth, and in Hapo, there's a temperature to the fourth. So in total, it's temperature to uh, 13th. So if R uh, is um, the temperature dependence in R is like temp uh, T to uh, more than 12th, then uh, there must be a, a sensitivity to T max. But uh, if the power of temperature is less than 12, then a, um, then a highest temperature contribution is suppressed. So there's no sensitivity. Mm. So in other words, it, the number density is determined at T reheating ah, and all the sensitivity to T max. So, uh, so in such a cases, for instance, if the fuel interaction is, is renormalizable terms, then a R, it's just temperature to the fourth. Mm. So it doesn't have a sensitivity to T max. Mm. So in such a way, uh, you can you know, avoid the sensitivity uh, dependence on uh, the maximum temperature. So, so can you show me the, the case for general K? Yes. Uh, yep. Okay, also in this case, also mm -hmm. you can see such a suppression. Yeah, so 
yeah, it, it is the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for in the integrant, basically it's a ratio of R and uh, some power of temperature. So uh, the, all of the thing, all of the relevant uh, parameter is the power of temperature in the integrant mm -hmm. here. So uh, depending on the alpha, we have three cases. Mm -hmm. If alpha is smaller than one uh, minus one, Mm. Um, then uh, there's no sensitivity to T marks. It's already mm. determined by theory heating. Nice. That's the basic idea. So here, okay. So there's a relation between N and K in the mm -hmm. in the second line, right? Right. Yeah. So when alpha equals minus one, you have a maximum. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the dependence on the maximum rating temperature. Mm -hmm. So when k equal to two, mm -hmm. n is the uh, oh, six, uh, n equal to six. six. Yeah. yeah, less than six, yeah. Think... n equal to six is alpha equal to one, n. k equal to two, yeah. n equal to six. So r is yeah. proportional to the t to the 12. Yes, and if exactly. k equal to, Mm -hmm. and it's negative i don't know and sorry and it's no, no, no. still positive sorry yeah so any two yeah and equal to two <laughs> two over three two, two over three yeah okay so little before n equal to six now you decrease Mm -hmm. the n before n equal to six for k equal to two now n mm -hmm. equal to two third for k equal mm -hmm. to four mm -hmm. if k yeah. is greater than five mm -hmm. then n is negative right then, then maybe then then the cross section doesn't have to be uh, t two or six. No. Um, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. See here. I don't know what is what was the assumption on. Uh, so RT, right? RT is the. Uh, yeah, RT is the uh, source term, right? Collision term. RT is collision term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. So, yeah, for negative n, so if k is bigger than five, mm. um, n is required to be negative. Mm. But, um, then I'm not sure the negative power of n, which can be uh, realized in some model. Um, uh, sorry, so a, well, there's a cut of dependence. So maybe yeah. n, n, let's say n equal to minus one, mm -hmm. then you have a demand. What is that then? Then, uh, okay, so it's a scattering cross section. Yeah. Well, and, and it can be minus two. Uh, that is a renormalizable. Renormalizable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if n is smaller than minus two, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, for n equal to minus two, yeah, renormalizable coupling. So it's still, even for the renormalizable coupling, you have a uh, sensitivity to the maximum uh, temperature of the universe, right? Um, well, no. <laughs> for the scattering, I think no. No. <laughs> yeah, for the renormalizable coupling, uh, I think there's no T max dependence, or well, still T reheating dependence, mm. I think. But I, no, no, no. but I, I think you show that in the middle, in the second equation, you show that yeah. there is log dependence. You still, mm -hmm. you have a log dependence for, let's say, I don't know what was the value for k. You have to choose. But uh, if n equal to minus two, mm -hmm. is it possible? Um. Well. Yeah. Some peculiar, <laughs> not, not <laughs> K, maybe, 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 성식, 
can take a look at <laughs> this equation to yeah. see if mm -hmm. n can be minus two fourths. I mean, I think that is the general possibility. So maybe mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just curious about that. <laughs> Yeah, and even such a even such a renormalizable case, uh, mm -hmm. maybe one should be a little bit careful about the decay from infraton because it always it's also a contribute even renormalizable coupling. We can throw mm -hmm. a root, so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it could happen to produce dark matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we can also. Take a careful look. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, any other question? Uh, yes. May I confirm? Mm -hmm. uh, for this pink or freezing case, the leak density depends on the potential shape and uh, the ratio of the temperature max and uh, temper the heating temperature. But uh, maybe the, this kind of uh, early epoch dynamics doesn't affect on um, WIMP or uh, freeze out case. Only mm -hmm. depends on the FIMP case. Is it true? Yes, yes. That's what uh -huh. I'd like to. Uh, yeah, that's part uh -huh. of the take home message from my talk. So the FIMP uh -huh. is interesting in that uh, it has a sensitivity to the inflation epoch. But WIMP mm -hmm. obviously doesn't because it's uh -huh. analyzed. So, um, you know, all the information has been lost once it is summarized. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Question. Yes. Thank you. Any other question? Uh, can I ask a small question? Uh, you mentioned the maximum maximum temperature is irrelevant for the choice of K. Mm -hmm. Uh, the power of the uh, potential, but uh, naively I thought uh, the maximum temperature also depends on the K, but uh, why such uh, independence appear or just approximation? Oh, um, in the T max here, you mean? Yeah. yeah. There is a dependence, uh, you see here, uh, but happens to be cancelled actually. It's numerical calculation. So it could be, um, I'm not sure the, any deeper reason, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a, just a numerical calculation. Mm -hmm. So still, indeed, uh, there's a dependence on K. Mm -hmm. But turns out, uh, there's a, it's just too little to distinguish by eyes. Uh, it, it is in a, in a function of K. Mm -hmm. uh, but compared to the... Uh, uh, T the heating, mm -hmm. uh, T maximum temp uh, maximum temperature does not much depends on the K. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, also uh, uh, this is another one, but uh, uh, I understand uh, the potential form is uh, important uh, uh, for, uh, for the dark matter production. But uh, uh, actually, this is my personal interest, but. Uh, uh, some people are uh, discussing multi field inflation, right? Then, in that case, the reheating is uh, uh, caused by the, uh, I mean, the multi field uh, can join the, the heating, right? Mm -hmm. So, in this case, the same uh, analysis can be uh, performed. Yeah, well, yes, I think so. Uh, the uh, all of the concern in computing dark matter abundance is uh, how the temperature evolves. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever its origin, uh, once we know the temperature evolution, we can compute the uh, dark matter abundance. So um, uh, whatever, how, well, how many uh, fields can participate in the heating, um, and uh, whatever temperature dependence uh, is with respect to the scaling factor A, uh, once we know it, the dependence on, of T on A, um, the rest of the computation is essentially the same. 
but your way is fast to solve the uh, inflaton equation motion, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah. then substitute it to the uh, radiation equation and you get the temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then maybe, yeah, you can do it in analytical way. So- oh. um, That depends, <laughs> it depends. Yeah. Um, the, the, well, uh, two things I can say right now is uh, the, in a technical side, in the Boltzmann mm -hmm. equation, uh, first you, you, you define the uh, common ring number density, which is essentially nx times a cubed. So once you know the relation between a and t, then you can construct the Boltzmann equation this way. And at the same time, um, you have to know the Hubble as a function of T temperature. So, so those two things. Um, but well, essentially, well, once you know the relation between A and T, then you can immediately find the, the form of H in terms of temperature. So uh, through the infraton, uh, the evolution of rho phi, mm. right? Mm. But it depends on the function of rho phi. So yeah. um, if you have a, an analytic solution for rho phi in, in, in your case, mm -hmm. then uh, the computation, as far as the infraton, as far as dark matter number density is concerned, the rest of the computation can be doable. Okay. So after getting the expression of lo-fi, the calculation is straightforward and uh, mm -hmm. we can follow your way. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thank you. Maybe you can ignore the decay rate from Platon mm -hmm. and just the evolution of the Platon, uh, multi-field in Platons. But mm -hmm. I think the Shuntaro is interested in the mixing between two uh, field uh -huh. cases. Uh -huh, uh -huh. In the case of, in the case of with mixings between two two components, I see. But I think maybe, I think your way of doing this approximation is maybe good. I think in, in, at least uh, when the implanton dominates the energy density. But you also you can compare between these approximations, analytic approximations, and also numerical. Yeah. Richard, right? So, so you can compare between the two. Do they match each, each other well? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, thank you. Um, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for your um, nice seminar. Actually, I want, I'm interested in the negative value of K also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh... I don't know. I've, I don't know if you have such a potential. Oh, uh, uh, well, I, I, yeah, well, you know, Keith and uh, Jan uh, wrote a paper on the non oscillatory inflation model, and mm. uh, that could be relevant for your interest. And it's a sort of runaway potential. As the, at the end of the day, the infraton becomes uh, quintessence. So, uh, um, so the reheating dynamics is completely different from what I talked about today. Mm. So maybe uh, you are uh, more interested in such, mm -hmm. such a scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so thank you for your nice discussion. Okay, so if there is no further question, uh, let's thank Kneo. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Kunio, uh, you. could you send me the talk file so that oh, we can yeah. share it uh, with the other guys? And also, I need it for the analytic Yeah. In Japan, right? You are you have an account in Japan, or oh in yeah. yeah. Do you have an account in mm -hmm. Korea and, or in Japan? Maybe oh. it's better <laughs> to have an account from Japan because. Uh, your address should be sim the same is as in the affiliation uh, address oh. <laughs> account so I haven't checked have you sent me the account number okay uh, can send me 
the I can't know. Sorry, I made sure okay. I to use. Okay, in any case, <laughs> okay, we can talk uh, later. Three emails. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Shintaro, okay. and the other. Thank guys. you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Right. See you later. All right. See you later.